Hey buddy. Hi. Gemma from ASD Rocks and Bo from ASD Rocks. I wanted to talk to Bo specifically today because I've been getting a lot of messages from people who have uh, kids who have ASD. And one of the things that they're talking a lot about is friends or friends at school. Now, you've got you've got loads of friends at school, don't you? Uh, I mean, yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Like, everyone's your friend, right? Well, I mean, people are friendly to me. Yeah. But you don't have friends in the same way that Finn does. Mm. So what's the difference? I... Well, I mean, I don't... I probably wouldn't... Well... I mean, not too sure. Okay. Like, like, I wouldn't, like, I would be perfectly fine where I am right now. You're very happy. Yeah. How you are now. Yeah. And with the number of friends and with the closeness of those friends. Mm hmm So, for example... Finn has a very best friend out of all of his friends, doesn't he? I, I, I guess I can see that, yeah. Yeah. Do you have a very best friend out of... No. Um, so Finn also has his friends, different friends, over to our house, right? Mm. But you don't really have any friends over, do you? Uh. No. And I think this is an extremely, extremely important subject because a lot of parents think that if you're not bringing home friends, that you don't have any friends or you're not happy. Hmm. Well, I mean, the best thing to do is ask, like, is ask if they have any friends and just listen to them. If they've got friends, they have friends. And if they don't, well, I mean, you, you probably know what to do from there. Okay. What I'm trying to show is the difference between what some parents see as being friends. Finn has friends that he brings home, mm -hmm. friends that he talks to outside of school. Yeah, my, my main point is just because they're not bringing over friends doesn't mean they don't have any. And it doesn't mean that they're not happy. Mm. If I forced you to bring someone home from school for a friendship, how would that make you feel? It would probably make me feel uncomfortable. Mm. A lot of parents think that because... So, like, who do you hang out with at lunch? Um, probably Anthony when I am. Yeah, um, when you are hanging out with someone. Yeah. And how often does that happen? Um, not as much as it used to. Mm, uh, no, wouldn't even be once a week, would it? Mm. Mm, wouldn't even really be twice a week, twice, once every two weeks, would it? You sort of see him and he walks past, but you guys aren't really hanging out at lunch, are you? Mm. And what about at recess? What do you do at recess? It's Probably the same thing as I was doing before. But are you happy? Yeah. Yeah? So if, if parents are worried that their kids don't have any friends at school... Then they should probably ask if they do. And if, for example, like, you think that people are friendly to you, like, as you walk past them, you say hi, and they say hi. Or there's just a basic interaction. That means they're friendly, right? Yeah. But they're not your friends. Like, Finn has friends. Mm -hmm. So it could be perceived that you don't have any friends. Mm. But you're happy. Yeah. And... If I want, if I was worried about you and I was saying, oh, you know, it's not healthy to have no friends, which is what 
one person has said, one person has said, I feel really worried for my child because I don't think it's healthy not to have any friends. Mm. Do you think it's unhealthy? Well, it would probably depend on how the child's feeling. A hundred percent. I agree with that 100%. I think that our social, so this comes down to psychology that you've been studying and mm. um, stigma. Oh, yeah. I think this comes down to stigma. How many friends a person has in our society and in our movies. Mm. Um, if you you just have the perception like oh if you don't have many friends you must be a very lonely person it, it it's so, sort of something like that but me for example like i don't have any i don't have lots of friends but i'm still happy nonetheless exactly and you're healthy yeah yeah and the worst thing that i could do would be to try and force you to fall into what my perception of friendship is. Mm. So I think you don't have any friends because you don't speak to anybody at school. You don't play with anybody at school. You don't call anybody after school. You don't have anybody come over. Therefore, I think that you're unhappy. I think that you're unhealthy. Mm. That is my stigma because yeah. our, our movies and our social our social um, environment says the more friends you have, mm. the happier you are, whether you're popular or not popular, or, you know, all Yeah, but I feel like people are misinterpreting the image. Like, you can be mildly happy while not having friends. It's just saying the more friends you have, the more, the more happy you'll be. Like, that doesn't mean you'll be unhappy if you don't have any friends a hundred percent or maybe for people on the spectrum they are happier with less friends because what happens when you get into big crowds uh that that what's the situation at like? school in a group of say 10 people in in uh at lunchtime all sort of talking to each other and hanging out how would you feel if i if if for example i was worried so i went to the school and i said i'm worried about bo he doesn't have any friends and so then the school said something like okay well what we'll do is we'll speak to a group of people and we'll see if we can insert bo into this and then one day you get told that you have to hang out with these people you don't know them very well you, you know their names whatever but then you have to spend lunch with them that day how would that make you feel that made me feel very uncomfortable and probably wouldn't make me feel very free yeah sure so then also so so you'd be feeling uncomfortable you know you've been asked to do this because other people's stigma says or my perception as a parent says it's not healthy not to have friends it's not healthy not to talk to anyone it's not you know it's it, but that's not true you're very healthy yeah are you healthy physically um okay. i think you're very yeah. healthy physically you're not unwell in any way are you healthy mentally yeah i think you're very healthy mentally do you think that having a group of friends to hang out with at lunchtime would make you happier or um well i mean depending on the person you are it could make you happier it could depending on the person you are absolutely but i think that's what we have to find out don't we mm. who is the person and one of the things that we can say within autism is that people who are on the spectrum generally what like when you introduce yourself to new people what's one of the things you say um i have autism and i'm very shy very shy so maybe 
you know, forcing them into these these group situations or even a even a one on one with someone else. Like when you meet someone new, how does that just one person new? Yeah, I feel very uncomfortable. Even when it's in your own home. Yeah. Right? Um so Because I don't know what they're like. I don't know if they're gonna do something uh, they're gonna do something that's pretty crazy i don't know do you know how to carry on a conversation with them like how to start and create and carry on a conversation um no not really no and is it stressful to try and have to think about how like if i said right this person is coming over and you guys are going to be friends and then i dropped you downstairs together and left and said go be friends how would that be well, I'd be, I'd be struggling a bit because I don't have any plans. Mm, mm. So, for example, for Finn's birthday, he liked to have a sleepover, mm -hmm. and um, Finn has some some friends at school that you go to school with right mm -hmm. and they're quite friendly with you aren't they mm. not technically your friends <laughs> yeah. i know it's your i know it's it's your reaction you always do that it's a little bit like hiccups for you um so your finn's friends are very friendly with you yeah and in a lot of ways although you don't contact them personally and although you don't ask them to come over when they do come you're very comfortable yeah i guess it's because that i guess it's because when my brother does it i know i can trust them okay. because finn will make sure i'm safe he does he does but quite often now we find a lot of finn's friends wanting to be your friend too like they oh, want yeah. you to play don't they oh, yeah and sometimes when you're comfortable and when you feel comfortable, I find you, the three of you or four, if like there's the two of you in here or and a couple online and you're all laughing and playing together, aren't you? Mm. And so technically I would, I'd say, yes, you have friends. No, they're not your friends, but they're people that you're comfortable to let into your environment yeah. and be completely 100% yourself. You don't need a plan because you you sort of know them and you know you feel safe. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And so for you, is that what it is about, about sort of new... If you had to choose at school, if someone said to you, you need to approach a group of two people or a group of ten people, which one Probably would... Probably two. Yeah. Because there would be... I would be more comfortable but probably not as comfortable as i was before but i would be feeling more comfortable if i then if i was in a group of 10 people mm. um what about groups in class i know that you have to do class work well i get used to it yeah that doesn't... i get used to the people there yeah i've spoken to your teacher she says or well, they say that in group work you're very very good but you are also, why do you think it's easier in class, in, a, in small groups in class? Because you get to know them, I presume. Mm -hmm. Also because what are you doing when you're splitting off into small groups? What are you meant to be doing? You're meant to be socialising? Are you, or are you meant to be doing the work? Oh, yeah, you're probably meant to be doing the work. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the major difference, mm. is that you're not meant to be socialising. Yeah. You're meant to be doing the work. Therefore, there is a plan, isn't there? Yeah. And you can contribute your information. You can contribute your information and your knowledge without having, uh, in these small groups, on mm. a subject but being outside in the playground, there is no subject, is there? Uh, on the oh. outside of the classroom, mm -hmm. in a group of friends, there's no one. It's not a small group in the class that you're talking about a particular subject working. 
No, it's not. So there's no plan. Yeah. I'm trying to relate it back to your saying there was a plan. That, that, that not having a plan is makes you uncomfortable. So tell me, number but it's one. Not just, it's not just not having a plan that, that kind of stresses me out, like that I struggle with. I don't want to say stress, but I just want to say struggle with. You can say whatever makes you comfortable. You can. Some people need to know that it stresses you out. It's yeah. important. There are different environments that stress, but please continue. Yeah, it's not just the not knowing what to do that I struggle with. It's the type of person they're going to, um, the type of person they are. And I just don't know. I just don't, I almost know nothing about them. Like, I don't know how they live, what they do. Mm -hmm. What about, you know, I think a part of being social is asking how they live and what they do. Mm. Would that make you feel comfortable or it would be would you feel uncomfortable asking someone how they live and what they do? I think I'd be uncomfortable because like I I don't really know why. Like no. I just doesn't feel comfortable. No. It's fine. So, you know, we've got the school holidays now mm -hmm. and you know, Finn's gonna meet up with his friends. Sometimes they're gonna come here. And we're really comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. We have someone really special coming during these holidays. Do you remember who? Mm -hmm. Who is it? Jess. Yeah. And we know Jess, don't mm -hmm. we? And Jess is your aide. We say your aide. But really, she's just a friend mm. who comes over and you get to hang out with. Um. But there's no, is there anybody at all that you would like us to invite over during the school holidays? No, no. Really? Not even Anthony? Well, I mean, I, I guess it's also trying to, trying to get, I guess it's also trying to get, trying to make, get on the good side is what also stresses me out. Like, I just don't know how to stay on the good side, like. You see me stay on the good side, but in my mind, I'm just, I just don't know. I just think of a reality that I do something bad, like, and it just stresses me out. So part of, part of, of not having people over is a fear of doing or saying the wrong thing that might make them angry with you. Well, not specifically angry. Okay. Just a negative feeling in general. Them having a negative feeling towards you. Or you having a negative feeling towards them. Uh, the first one. Them having a negative... So maybe you say something that is culturally different that might make them feel bad. Or maybe you say something... Um... That would upset them. Is that the sort I Yeah, the second one. Like, that would upset them. And that could be anything, couldn't it? Yeah, I I don't know what it is. I don't know what their triggers are. And <sighs> I just That's okay, that's really interesting. And, and I just don't and I just don't want to light the fuse for any of them. So because you don't know what anybody's triggers are, it's easier for you. Like, you don't know. So many people have different triggers that would, and whether it be religious, cultural, social, environmental, like, you know, someone, you know, you might make one of your jokes that you think is really funny that other people find offensive. Is that what you mean? Yeah, basically. You know, you could invite, for example, Anthony over and then watch Jimmy Carr. And he might, mm. and you just don't know how he's going to react. Is um, well, I mean, I probably, I probably find out what what jokes would make him offended. How do you find like, that out? I I just I just probably ask. Do you have any triggers or anything? Yeah, it's really interesting, actually. You know, when I was a kid at school, um, we had this thing called the shits. 
um, someone would crack the shits with you. Yeah. That, right? Mm-hmm. That's what, that's the, what, and, and trust me, trust me, girls do it so much more than boys, right? <laughs> girls, like you could say something and like a week later you find out, a week later you find out that one of your friends isn't talking to you because you've said something and you didn't even know you said it. Mm. That's actually a pretty normal thing and that's how, and when I say normal, I mean we can't not offend everyone. I offend people all the time on here. There are people that don't agree with how I've raised you. Mm. But we do, don't we? Yeah. I I see you now and who you are and who you've turned out to be as it, it couldn't be any better. Mm. It is, it's enabled us to sit here and talk about something so conceptual. We're not talking about something, you know, what is this called? We're, mm. we're talking about a concept of friendship that, you know, 10 years ago, you probably couldn't have had this conversation. You certainly wouldn't have known what a stigma was. Mm. So many people don't agree with the way Mm. The way that I talk to you, the, how much I talk to you, how loud I am when I talk. You know, I mean, you're not going to come across anybody in this world more offensive than me. <laughs> That's how some people see it. Mm. Do you like me? Yeah, of course. No, it doesn't have to be of course. Not everybody likes their mothers. Yeah, I know, but you certainly don't make me angry. Do I, do, do so you like me? Do you love me? Yeah. Do you enjoy my company? Yeah, of course. Not of course. It doesn't uh, have to be of course. That's the thing. Some uh, people don't, especially at 17, there are, or 16 and 17, you know, those later teenage years, there's heaps of kids out mm. there that are just like, mum, F off. Mm. Like, just get out of my face. I don't want to talk to you, but... Are you like that? No, not at all. Not at all. We love our chats. A lot of people on um, who watch ASD Rocks who maybe are new people, sometimes they get on and they see a new one and they don't see how far we've come and where we've come and mm. what we've done. And they're like, this chick's nuts. But they don't, they haven't seen the whole story. It's like... Um, when you only see the end of something and you don't know how they got there. Mm. Um, But again, because I'm the one on here doing this and, you know, because I'm the one trying to help people and you are too, and you're amazing with helping people because you sit down here and you have these discussions, Mm. it's your words that help people more than mine. So your words of saying, ah, no, I love having you around mum and I love chatting with you mum and I love the way you do things. Is there something I do that does trigger you? Nothing that comes to mind. Mm. I try very hard not to trigger you. <laughs> I appreciate that. I know most of your triggers. Um, I know, I know, in fact, I probably know your triggers better than you know your triggers because I have learned for 17 years, things that used to trigger you don't trigger you anymore, but that's because we've worked so hard on doing Mm. that. So there's a lot of safety between us, isn't there? Yeah. There's a lot of safety with Finn, isn't there? Mm -hmm. A lot of safety with dad. Yep. Um, as we start going outside of that initial pod, is there a lot of safety with, like, your grandparents, any of your grandparents? Would you say, uh, like, if I said you're going to go and spend the night with grandma? Yeah, I, I believe I'd feel safe with them. What about grandpa? Yeah. You feel safe? Yeah. Yeah? So you don't think that, it, you think they know you well enough to know what your triggers are and know what your foods are and know... Um. When the time comes, I let them know. You'd have to tell them. But you feel confident enough with yeah. them that you could say it. Yeah. And they wouldn't force you. That's yeah. A, that's a beautiful thing. That's fantastic. I love hearing that. I think it's so important to have those people. 
So where does the line end, um, you know, of safety? Do you know? Um, when they just, they just want me to do this thing that doesn't make me feel really safe and they just, they just want me to do it anyway. That's probably where the line would end. Yeah, okay. And what would you do in that case if you were with someone and they were pushing you to do something that you didn't want to do? I, I I don't know, I'll be honest. Do you think do you think that could happen at school with other kids? And... Yeah. That, yeah, that. It's that. so that's your your fear. A bit of peer pressure. Maybe. I, yeah, I think so, because I'm a very stage fright person. Okay. Yeah. So if someone, you know, said, Okay, Bo, do this would you be happy in a group of, of peers, like of kids at school, if there was a whole bunch of kids at school and they were all, let's say, they were doing something not crazy naughty, not illegal, but, you know, a little bit naughty mm. and you didn't feel comfortable, what would you do? And they said, come on, Bo, you do it too. Uh, we're all doing it. I'm not sure if... If it's really what other people would want, I'm not really sure if this is what other people would want me to do. Like, for example, for example, someone walking by the street, they might see me as insane. <laughs> they, if I ever did this, they might see me as insane. Did what? Uh, the, the, whatever it was. Yeah, probably. It, like, it probably just depends on the situation on what we're even doing in the first place. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because if it's like vandalizing graffiti, then yeah, that would be a reasonable line to draw. Okay, and but that wouldn't be insanity. People who mm. are caught for being for vandalizing are never charged with insanity. They're charged mm. with damage of property. But yeah, not yeah. Insanity. Yeah, but I know, but I'd probably be seen as a criminal is my point. Ah, okay, sure. What about something like um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, there was a situation at school where kids weren't allowed to go down to the local 7-Eleven. I know it didn't involve your year, but I'd like you mm. to try to imagine if you and some friends and they were like come on Bo, we're gonna go down and you knew that it wasn't allowed i'd let them know what would you say i say i'm not sure if that's what the school wants us to do because i've heard it plenty of times that we're not supposed to go there and they're like nah it's okay they're not gonna be there come on let's go and i'd let them know that they've got security cameras if we do anything bad yeah, sure. And they said, we're not going to do anything bad. We're just going to go and, and get a get a Slurpee from, from the 7-Eleven. Come on, let's go down. I That would relieve my tensions a little bit. But then again, I don't know if they're lying or not. Mm. I, I guess it all just comes down to trustworthiness. Beautiful. And it's hard to trust someone that you don't know. Yeah. And it is a little bit my fault when it comes to that because I have maintained very strong anti-lying policy in mm. this house. So you always know that when I tell you something, I tell you the truth. Yeah. And that doesn't happen so much outside in schools and stuff. Mm. Kids often lie yeah but i guess with you it, it's not technically your fault like you're just doing you just tell me the truth to keep me safe i do i know i it started because the reason that i always told you the truth was so that you would trust me yeah and the reason that i needed your trust was so that i could slowly increase your that your your boundaries so for example going out to other people's houses you'd never like doing that mm. like when we used to go over and um have barbecues and things like that mm. um i would say to you if you tell me that you want to go home we will go home that minute 
If I didn't keep my promise, the next time I asked you to come, would you come? I don't know. Mm. You would get, you would double guess me. And it's the same with food. And it's the same. Mm. So, so when, when I am honest with you and I say, if you try this and you don't like it, I'm not going to make you have any more. Or if I say, we're going to go to a restaurant and if you don't like the food or if you don't like the environment, you can tell me and we will go and you know. So my, my role is very different. I, I've done it for different reasons. It was a little bit of a manipulation in a lot of ways. I needed you to trust me so that I could push you further and further. Okay. Oh. But kids in school, they do, they, they lie. Um, mm. You know, Finn has a lot of trouble with one of his friends um, who lies a lot and he's recently sort of been like oh you know i'm just gonna block him i can't handle it anymore you know he just mm. he's just lying all the time and he's just over it uh, but but lying is is we you know there's all these different kinds of lies yeah there's like silly lies like you lie to be silly yeah like I to suppose. be intentionally silly like they're called they're probably called harmful ha harmful <laughs> Harmless lies. Harmless. Harmless. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yes, harmless lies. Like, um. Like, they're lies that, that are just intended to be funny. Almost like jokes, really. Yeah. Like, if I got a, um, pretend spider and put it up the side, that would be, and I would say, oh, there's a spider on your arm. And there wasn't. That's lying, but it was supposed to be silly. That? Yeah. Okay. Uh, sort of, yeah. But then again, there's also, there's also protecting lies, lies to protect you, like lies that have the purpose to keep, to keep you safe. Mm. Well, that try to keep you safe. And then there's just regular lies that just, that, that are just meant to be bad. Yeah, straight up lies. Did you do this? No, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. And then there's another lie called lying by omission it's my most hated lie it's the lie where it, it's basically like i lied because i had no choice no no it's the lie where you don't tell someone like if you um it happens a lot in more in sort of relationships like one person cheats on another person mm. and if no one asks them and they say you know, no one went up and said, hey, did you cheat on me this week? Then because they they haven't lied, they haven't said, no, I didn't. So they don't feel like they've lied. Or if something breaks in the house and you don't go up, you know how if we have an accident, we tell you immediately. straight away, you guys come up to me and you're like, I broke this. Do you get in trouble? No. No, because we all have accidents, mm. right? And and we're all going to make mistakes. So you may as well just say it. But if you don't tell me and I find it later, then you've lied by omission. You haven't come to me to tell me. You haven't you've mm. omitted the truth. You've you've hidden it. But you didn't lie because you didn't say, oh, no, I didn't do that. Uh, you just didn't say anything. Um, and that's, that's, that happens a lot in more grown-up, um, much more grown-up. Yeah. Kids are, uh, you know, they, they hide the truth, you know. It's, it's yeah. also something that they do. So all of these... All yeah, of these... but because the truth can be scary sometimes. So... This is all comes down to having friends, doesn't yeah. it? How do I speak to them? What are their triggers? Do I tell them the truth? Don't I? Because the truth might scare them. How do I? Mm. Yeah. Manage? There are a lot of factors on, in being a friend that, that, that are too much for me to think about. Which is why and, and I just feel very pressured about it. And because it can be very overwhelming. So that's why I I struggle to make friends. Mm. 
But it's not because they don't want to be friends with you. It's because you're happier without that. Well, I mean, I probably... Like, in all honesty, like, I'd probably be as happy as I am now. Like, I just have, like, I just have an extra friend. I see. When I say said the word happier, you're okay. Um, yes. Okay. You would have an extra friend. So let's say we took, um, you know, I mean, I've been introducing people to you mm -hmm. um, like Jess. Yeah. And like Jenny. Mm -hmm. Now, Jenny, I listen to the two of you laughing. You, you are downstairs and you guys are so loud. It's great. It's great because you're not often really loud. Mm -hmm. And it's so great to hear you guys. And you're laughing. Now, you're supposed to be studying. But I don't mind. Because we're getting along. You're getting along so well. Now, you don't know everything about Jenny, do you? No. Do you worry about her triggers? Well, as long as I I don't intentionally try to light them. As, as long as I don't try to light them, I'd say... I... What was the question? That's okay. You don't. You, do you worry about her triggers? Ah, well, I mean, they are something con to consider. But it doesn't stress you like it might. Yeah, just as long as I know what I'm doing, I will probably be all right. So you feel in control enough with yeah. with Jenny to have a joke, to say what you know, yeah, whatever's on your mind. Do you think that if you said something with Jenny that might offend her, she would give you the opportunity to apologise and to explain? Um, I think so. Mm -hmm. Do you think she'd be honest with you and say, whoa, Bo, that was too much? Yeah. Yeah. Is that easier, knowing that there are some, that people... Yeah. Okay. And what about, what about Jess? Um, because you don't get to see Jess as much. We only get to see Jess mm. in the holidays, but you see her for a lot longer. You spend a lot more time together. Yeah. So, do you feel comfortable? I mean, I know you guys have a lot. Having said, you know the kinds of games that you guys play, push mm. the limits, and I hear you guys laughing, and you go out and you do cooking, and you do things mm. like that together. Yeah. So. I would say, I'd say that's your brother. I would say that's a friendship. Yeah. Um, but they're contrived friendships. I've created those friendships with a purpose. Yeah. So they're different to school and your age friendships, aren't mm. they? Yeah. So do you, do, I, do, you, do you want more friends? Um, well, it's not my my intentions but if i get fr more friends i get more friends yeah but you're not you when you say you're happy you would be happy with friends no, just I'd as be, happy yeah i'd be just as happy because you're not unhappy now no i'm not unhappy now and can you just run through your lunchtime routine for me so you pack I'm, up from class i i get my lunch well i I would go to my locker and and pack away my stuff first, and then I'd get my lunch and I have a snack, and then I and once I've done once my lunchbox empty, I just roam around. Yeah, roam around on your own. Yeah, and nobody bothers you. No, not quite. What What does that mean? Not quite. <laughs> Every now and then there are out of the ordinary moments. Which is what. Like, people that, that are just doing what I consider to be pretty, um, pretty crazy. But I'll just leave it as that for now. Do these other people have issues? Um, no, it, 
when I see them, I just, I just assume they're probably, they know what they're doing and the, the others are just having fun, but, like, like, the activities they're doing is this, like, um, for example, well, it's, I, it'd probably be questionable, like, like, nobody's happy being offended, but if, but I know if a teacher saw it, they might get into trouble. Okay, all right. They're pushing the lines of... of yeah, they're trying to... Of what's allowed at school. Yeah, okay. and I just... Usually when that happens, I just back out of there because I don't want to be involved. Yeah, okay. I, I probably don't want to see what happens. And that would be your only interaction, really, if it would be... You, you're pretty much in your own world and you do your own thing and you just wander around but if if someone does something around you that's not quite right you move away and yeah. continue on your own yeah yeah okay awesome that's awesome i i think i've you know this this chat has been really great mm. um i think that parents really need to change their idea mm of the stigma of having friends yeah yeah it, because when if you don't have any friends it doesn't mean you're not happy you're just you could still be mildly happy and not have any friends it's just that if you do have friends it's a bonus um do you think that parents should be worried about their children who don't have friends well i mean if they don't have if they don't have friends and they're worried they, I probably they should probably ask if they're happy because it's okay to be concerned about your child. I'm I'm not trying to prevent that. I'm just I'm just trying to limit it. Li I'm just trying to prevent the oh if you don't have any friends you're a very unhappy person type of thing. Putting everybody into the same category, which yeah, is wrong it's like because... yeah, it, like it is. Like, it's okay to be concerned about your child. If your child doesn't have any friends, it's okay to check up on them. Just don't assume that they're a very unhappy person. Or unhealthy. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because you're very happy. Mm. Um, and if I tried to force a friendship onto you like it's school holidays and i'm going to try and force a friendship and bring someone over and put them in in your space how would that make you feel very uncomfortable very uncomfortable yeah so it's really about us having these chats yeah it's really about me finding out you know i'm i, I can't let you as a good mum i can't let you spend the next two weeks just on your phone running. Mm. I can't do that, right? Mm. So I can't do that. I can't let you just stim for two weeks solid. And yet I also can't force a friend on you. So mm. my job as your mum is to find what is acceptable to yeah. break up that stimming. Mm. What we can do where you can go and so we have a holiday schedule so every tuesday and every thursday jenny's going to come um she's going to come in the evenings the same as usual uh and you're going to do work mm -hmm. because you've got holiday homework don't you yeah you've got holiday homework from psychology and you've got stuff that you've got to deal with with chemistry for next year and then we're going to have Jess come over and she's going to do, uh, Finn is going to give you his brownie recipe. Do you remember that brownie that you yeah. fell in love with? Yeah. And you and Jess are going to make the brownies, which I think is an awesome idea. Mm. You guys are going to go down to the supermarket. You're going to get the ingredients you're mm. going to do all those things and then come back and do the cooking you know so we're gonna break up you'll still have plenty of time to stim because even when yeah. there's 10 minutes left alone even if, if she leaves before the shower it's what you do right mm. it's like it's like your happy place <laughs> yeah. and that's okay 
you know what? It's okay. We just have to learn where we can do that and how much we can do that because doing mm. something 100% of the time is not healthy. Mm. But doing something that makes you happy none of the time isn't healthy either. Mm. All right. Well, I think we've been talking for ages about yeah. this. I think we should head Three on. Three quarters of an hour. I know, but you were so interesting. It was so good to hear your side of things. So mm. um, we'll we'll leave that now. All right. And um, we have to get prepared for the occupational therapist. Who I apologise was supposed to finish his job last time, but now we have someone new because we never got the report. So oh. it just is the way it is. All but right. you can stay up here for the majority of time. Don't right. running and that sort yeah. of thing. All right. Okay. You rock, mate. Thanks. <laughs>